Today on Horsepower, another monumental match of power and torque competition. Two teams of recent gearhead grads face off in the second Scholastic Engine Builder Challenge. Before we kick off this year's challenge, here's a look at last year's competitors and the rules they followed in pursuit of championship horsepower and torque. Each team had a $5,000 budget from Summit Racing to build up a Chevy ZZ4 short block. Then three practice pulls, 30 minutes of tuning, and three competition runs in search of the best horsepower and torque averages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, a year's passed. We got the floors cleaned up and ready for a rematch. The parts are all here, and guess what? So are this year's contestants. Let's meet them. Wearing red and representing last year's winning campus, Ben Parsons and Chris Baca from the Wild Tech campus in Blairsville, Pennsylvania. I'm ready. Right, and ready. wearing blue, the challengers from the West, Skylar Brand and Ryan Smythe from Wild Tech campus, Sacramento, California. Each team will build up a Ford Racing 347 short block, each hoping to make winning horsepower by harnessing their skills and training at Wild Tech. They teach you professionalism along with being the best that you can be just a lot more fun to go through life, you know, doing something you love. We try and teach like core concepts that they can apply to anything. Last year, the Sacramento team went for high RPMs using big runner heads, solid roller cam, and a single plane intake manifold. The Blairsville bunch, well, they took a more conservative route with smaller runner heads that they machined heavily, hydraulic cam, and dual plane intake manifold. Despite a few dramatic moments, Keep going. Okay. they had a winning combination. This year, the combinations are closer, but the strategy's different enough to make for a good matchup. These are uh, Trick Flow 64 combustion chamber, 192 intake runner. We use an AFR CNC head, a smaller intake runner and uh, 58 cc chamber heads. The cam we went with a trick flow with pretty good duration. This is our competition cam. It's 230 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths. 598 lift, sets on 110 degrees lobe separation. This right here is the heart of the engine. So for the Blairsville team, it's a Holley 750 HP carb Edelbrock air gap intake trick flow heads with 64 cc combustion chambers and one of their hydraulic roller cams. Compression ratio should be about 10.3 to 1, like last year, fairly conservative. For the West Coast guys, same carbon intake, but their AFR heads have 58cc combustion chambers, and they're using a single pattern comp hydraulic roller with a little more max lift. Estimated compression ratio is a little more on the edge at 11.1 to 1. If we double check each other and make sure everything goes in right as it's supposed to go to start it off, I think we'll be good to go. We figured we got a really good chance. Time to unwrap the goodies and get to work. Gentlemen, start your engine builds. The Sacramento Blue Team jumps right into the build first with their secret weapon, the hydraulic cam. So that's what we wanted. We wanted a very simple build, yet at the same time to make good power and be able to handle, handle the, the duty. Meanwhile, the red team takes a slower and more detailed approach, starting by disassembling the heads for some boarding. Now this is a good time where four hands are a lot better than two. Definitely. <laughs> Twice as good. Yeah. Remember guys, when you peel them off and you pull them cups up, you want to make sure there's no shims floating around under there. All right. By the way, the rules are that the WyoTech instructors can observe and advise, but they can't do any of the actual work. All the valve train, all the springs out. Lottie dotty. We like to potty. Lubed up here. Nice and smooth action. It'll keep the lifters in place. While the Sacramento team makes quick progress, the Blairsville team takes their time with details. Not every day you get to grind away at a pair of $1,400 heads. That's going to help air to flow a little bit better through here. Not very much, but just a little bit. Every little bit counts. Two degrees advanced. So we came up with that. Um, it was a collaborative effort. <laughs> OK. <laughs> One step forward, two steps back. It's all right, we're going, we're going. 
Just make sure, double check, triple check, and we'll be good. Divide by two, and that's where I should be reading. That way I can get it to dead zero. Ben is picking up the pace for the Blairsville team, but time is ticking away, and Chris is still porting the heads. Pretty much now, just waiting on the heads. Once we get those done, we can really start slamming stuff together. We're going on. Huh? Yep. Let's push this on a little further. You still lined up on the formula? Pretty damn close, huh? Yeah, that's good. good. Yeah, that's right on the money. That's perfect. Four bolts. Hey. Trying to figure out how to get this oil pump on here. Neither of us have ever installed a Ford oil pump. I thought it was good before. About the only... There, that works. Glad they figured that out. But there's much more to go before these builds are ready for the dyno. That's coming up when we come back. Hey, in case you're late joining us, we've turned over the horsepower shop to some WildTech Gearhead grads. Two teams competing in our second annual Scholastic Engine Builder Challenge. Now, each is trying to make the most horsepower and torque in a Ford short block on a budget of five grand. It's a nice wrench. I like Skyler it. and Ryan from the Sacramento campus are a little more animated and a little more on the edge with their engine build strategy. But of course, it's the quiet guys you gotta watch out for. Ben and Chris from the Blairsville PA campus are taking a little more conservative approach and hoping to port their way to more power. Chris spent some time practicing, you know, making sure he could handle the job, you know, especially in a minimum amount of time, and, and that he did, you know, a very good job. With the heads ported to near perfection, the red team is ready to rock and roll. And after we do this, all we do is bolt on parts. So we're pretty good. Bolt on. That was a difficult. That was. But yeah, we got through it. Oh yeah. Butter. Yeah. Dead nuts on. Right there. Okay. <laughs> Neither team had to worry about paying for spark plugs. We provided Denso plugs to each team to make sure they had plenty of spark. Oh, they're doing pretty good. Aside from a couple little setbacks, I think we're doing all right. Most of our parts have gone together really well. Let's go right there. It's just touching. There's a quarter turn plus quarter turn should be good. Yeah, those look pretty good too, Skyler. Looks good, brother. Yeah, they're they're dialed. All right, good job, man. Looks like Chris can't get enough porting. This time to create a smooth airflow path between the carb spacer and the intake. Working with the very same Edelbrock intake, Ryan's mission is to trim the ports so they match the gasket holes, again producing smoother airflow. With their generous five grand parts donation for each team, Summit Racing's Nan Gellhardt stops by to check in on the challenge. Hey, Nan Gellhardt, how are you? I'm pretty excited about it again this year. I think it's cool to get the, the challenge back, to get the teams. There's a little grudge thing going on here. They've got some reputation to uphold. So they, the Clearsville team says they're still the favorites, but it looks like the other team is well on track too. It's pretty cool. Come on, you son of a gun. There it is. Yeah. The people at Summit are really gearheads, so we really understand the passion. We really like to play with our toys, and we're very interested in the next generation of gearheads. We want to see these guys learn how to use our parts, learn how to use automotive aftermarket parts, learn how to do custom stuff, not be afraid of it. That's why we do it. Uh, well, you're sticking around for the dyno pulls, right? Oh, for sure. For sure, that's the fun part, noise. Noise, noise. and horsepower, love it. Well, it looks like the teams are finished with their builds and ready for the noise. Stick around for some exciting dyno runs. Welcome back to our second annual Scholastic Engine Builder Challenge. 
where the defending Blairsville PA Wild Tech team is ready to meet their fate with a mighty dyno. Yeah, we're a little bit nervous, but we're definitely excited. So we went through everything just to make sure we didn't forget anything, and uh, think we're ready. Once it fires up, then all the stress, you know, it's just like, ah. I hope our uh, push rods don't get compressed too tight when we pump them up, pump oh, up the lifters. It'll be just fine. You did such a good job on that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I talked the Ford guys into working with us. They're very generous. It was really cool to work with them. So. They're filling. Numbers, guys. It's really good. After a few impressive practice runs, the Blairsville team has 30 minutes to change the oil and do any tuning they want for the final competition dyno runs. We also provided royal purple break-in oil and synthetic oil to each team here in the dyno cell. Being we're carrying 400 foot-pounds of torque at three grand, I'd say when we get done putting oil in it, we fire up and rock. Yeah? Good idea. Leave well enough alone, huh, yes, Professor? Is that right? Yes, sir. I'm getting real nervous. <laughs> hmm, looks like a leaky breather could cause some problems. But the Blairsville team gets it wrapped up just in time for their competition runs. All right, here we go. So here's how it works. We run the engine three times, take the three horsepower numbers, add them up, and divide them by three to get the average. We do the same with the torque numbers, and then the two averages are added together for the final result. Got it? All right, guys, that's number one of the competition pole, 488, 460. Two competition pole, 479, 458. And last competition pull, 479, 455. I'm happy with those numbers. <laughs> and it's going to be tough to compete with. That's awesome. Well, how you guys feel now about that run? Very good. I feel very good about that. All right, push that bad boy in there. It's going to be a hard competition for the other team to beat, but you know they got a good setup too, so we're a little bit worried, but we'll see. Yep. It'll be exciting right down to the end, I guess, huh? With everything wired up, tightened down, primed, and buttoned up, Sacramento's built-up Ford is ready for some action. Woo! Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Right up. Get a torque, baby. Look at the torque. But it was, it was a high oil too, too, too. Strong engine. 395.3, and that team is? Well, we can't tell you that yet. The Sacramento team is ready for their three competition runs when we come back. Welcome back to our second annual Scholastic Engine Builder Challenge. 
the defending champion Wild Tech team from Blairsville, PA, had an impressive run on the dyno with peaks over 392 horsepower, 434 foot-pounds of torque. But now it's Sacramento's turn to strut their stuff. And from the looks of their practice pulls, this competition will be a close one. I think both combinations are really, really close, so it should be, it should be fun to watch. A little difference in compression, whether it's going to be an advantage either way because of running, you know, a pump gas, I guess we'll see. Said he's going for it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Pulls right up there. Did you hear that when they shut it off? No. Kept going. Diesel to bit. Diesel to bit, it's fine. Diesel? I don't know, I think we lost some numbers. We lost some numbers. Crunch those numbers, Joe. <laughs> Time to do the math, and it's a good thing we have a calculator, because this could come down to just a few numbers. Heart is starting to pound. Close. Okay, now. Wow, this has been tense. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to watch you gearheads at work, see your planning pay off, and it was really very close on the bottom line. So here it's time to announce the winner. They had an overall horsepower average of 395.3. An overall average of 439.6 foot-pounds of torque for a combined score, a combined score of 834.9. And that team is the blue team from Sacramento. Congratulations, gentlemen. Good job. Good job. Too cold. Good job. Good job. Who gets to take the cup? Give That's the big totally guy. Good. You guys, here, take it. Congratulations, gentlemen. Yes, I know. Oh, Good job, buddy. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Oh, you Congratulations you. all the way around to two great Wild Tech teams job, and a nail-biting competition. Ah, oh, the faces of victory. Yeah, and I would say that it's been uh, more than I actually expected it to be. Uh, close competition, um, good representation for Wild Tech. We came into the game with our plan to make a, a flat torque curve. You know, we wanted low end torque and we were shooting for an average and our combination really paid off. I'm very happy the whole week, definitely. One year Blairsville, one year Sacramento. Let's see what we get next year. It was fun.